Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Zoology Podcast. So in this episode, we're going to try to answer, why do giraffes have such long necks? The challenge of evolutionary biology is to explain the origin of adaptations. However, uncovering these origins is tricky, and sometimes things can prove to be more complicated than they appear at first sight. The long neck of the giraffe is one such challenge. The neck of the giraffe, despite sometimes being over 2.5 meters long, is only comprised of seven vertebrae, which is no more than in your human neck. These massive elongated vertebrae are an amazing feat of natural engineering, but also they have resulted in one of the most peculiar looking animals on the planet. How could such a strange looking animal evolve such a long neck in the first place? This question for the past century and a half has puzzled naturalists and been the subject of many a debate. One of the key figures in asking questions of evolution is of course our man, Charles Darwin. In The Origin of Species, Darwin explained that the giraffe had obtained its very long neck by small successive stages, each individual with a slightly longer neck being able to survive on average a little better than their shorter necked relatives. So, over time, you would get a long necked giraffe. Darwin wrote that, quote, The giraffe, by its lofty stature, much elongated neck, forelegs, head and tongue, has its whole frame beautifully adapted for browsing on the higher branches of trees. It can thus often obtain food beyond the reach of the other ungulate or hoofed animals inhabiting the same country, and this must be a great advantage to it during dearths. So, under nature, with nascent giraffe, individuals which were the highest browsers and were able during the dearths to reach even an inch or two above the others will often have been preserved. End quote. Darwin therefore explains simply that the individual giraffes which, by happenstance, had longer necks were able to reach higher branches and thus had more food available to them, so it would be more likely to survive in harsh conditions and therefore be more likely to contribute to the next generation of giraffes. Rinse and repeat over many, many, many generations and you get the wonderful animal that we are blessed with today. Or putting it more simply, short neck giraffes plus natural selection plus time equals long neck giraffes. However, it might be more complicated than just that, and many scientists have had issues with this simple explanation. In 1871, the naturalist George Jackson Myvart published a book-length rebuttal to Darwin's theory on evolution by natural selection, titled On the Genesis of Species. Like many other late 19th century naturalists, Myvart accepted evolution, but rejected natural selection as the driver of change. One of the key points of his book was that natural selection could not account for the intermediate stages between the animal's ancestral form and that of its descendants. This sparked written rebuttals between Darwin and Myvart, with Darwin explaining how natural selection could account for the intermediate stages, but he avoided laying out in exact step-by-step scenarios which would have taken place in the distant past. Darwin admitted that paleontologists have only just begun to probe into the fossil record, and so tracing evolutionary lines of descent was a risky manoeuvre, since any findings which he based his predictions on would most likely have to be revised in the future. The exchange between Myvart and Darwin did nothing to resolve the question of how the long-necked giraffe had evolved. Proposing plausible adaptive scenarios can be easy to do, but actually being able to test them is another story altogether. Even now, after nearly a century and a half since Darwin and Myvert had their disagreements, the evolution of the giraffe's long neck still remains contested. However, most scientists have come to rely on two evolutionary hypotheses. The first and most common hypothesis is an extension of the argument Darwin outlined in 1872. Competition over food resources coupled with natural selection and random phenotypic change has resulted in the giraffe's evolving elongated necks. This makes sense as it means that longer necked giraffes have a survival advantage over their shorter necked brothers and other herbivore cousins. This idea has been supported by one of the few experimental studies looking at this question. Elisa Cameron and Jahan Du Toit published a study in 2007 on giraffe feeding ecology. They found that many of the leaves located closer to the ground were eaten by other herbivores, therefore limiting the food availability to the giraffes. However, giraffes had no such competition for food located at the top of the trees, and therefore they were able to consume far more food 
than compared to the mid or low level ranges of the trees. This showed that during times of food scarcity, such as droughts, giraffes with long necks gain an advantage from being able to access food sources unavailable to other animals. This makes sense, and there appears to be some evidence to support this first hypothesis then, but let's look at the second hypothesis and see if we can find some convincing arguments. Sexual selection is the name of the game for the second hypothesis. Male giraffes engage in a behaviour known as necking. This is where two male giraffes try to establish who is more dominant through two methods. The first is a low intensity aggression, where each males lean their necks on each other, trying to push the other off balance. The males which can stay upright the most is the winner. The second form of this behaviour is a display of highly intensive aggression. The males will swing their necks at each other, trying to land blows with their ossicones, the horn-like structures on the top of their heads. These fights do not normally result in injury. However, their blows when landed right have enough power in them to cause serious injury, including broken jaws, broken necks, and even death. In 1996, two researchers, Robert Simmons and Lou Sheepers, published a paper titled Winning by the Neck, Sexual Selection in the Evolution of Giraffe. In this paper, they cited many observations that giraffes fed at lower levels than they expected, and therefore a giraffe's long neck did not confer that much of a feeding advantage. Instead, they argued that the competition between males was the driving force in the evolution of giraffes' long neck, in which males with longer necks were able to generate more force, and thus they had a greater chance of winning competitions over rival males, and therefore they'd be more likely to produce more longer necked offspring. Now you may ask, well, why is it that females also have long necks? And the only answer so far is that might be a case of genetic correlation between the sexes. In other words, genes being passed along by the males are also passed into the female line, and the females are therefore affected by them, and thus they grow long necks as well. A paper published in 2009 by Mitchell, Van Stittert and Skinner in the Journal of Zoology showed that data doesn't suggest that males invest more in the growth of their necks than females do. Actually, Female giraffes add neck mass faster than males, however adult males tend to have slightly more length overall in their necks than females. Though not by a lot, just slightly more. These differences are thought to be so minimal that it makes it unlikely that sexual selection is a driving evolutionary force in why giraffes have such a long neck. However, evolution is a complicated process, and it's not always one single factor that results in phenotypic change, actually it's very rarely that. It's quite valid to suggest that perhaps the giraffe began developing longer necks due to one factor, and then this adaption was co-opted and further developed due to another factor, like greater chance in winning dominance displays. This was identified by Simmons and Outweg in a 2010 paper published in the Journal of Zoology. They argued that the long neck of the giraffe may have evolved in response to some ecological change such as aridification but then was co-opted into other functions which caused further alterations as they were placed under different evolutionary pressures. The advantages provided by giraffes long necks today, be it in terms of feeding, sexual selection or both, do not definitively tell us why the trait evolved in the first place. It's important to remember that the current function of a trait is not necessarily representative of why it evolved in the first place. We have to recognise then that if the necks of modern giraffes are even partially attributable to a shift in function, then our ability to answer the question of why giraffes have evolved such long necks cannot be based upon the living animals alone. Simmons and Altwood recognised this and suggested going back into the fossil record to understand why giraffes evolved their ossicones and how they correspond to neck length. They suggest that if evolution of ossicones track with neck elongation, then this might be an indicator that necking contests had something to do with giraffes growing longer necks over time. However, as you will be repeatedly reminded in your first years of university, correlation does not imply causation. Even if the evolution of ossicones and long necks coincided, that does not mean that the two are evolutionary bound together. Although by investigating this question, we could uncover the needed historical angle to better cement our understanding of giraffe evolution. But lucky for us, we now have a pretty good understanding of the intimate stages between modern giraffes and their common ancestor. As shown by a 2015 study in the Royal Society Open Science Journal by Danowitz and others, elongation of the neck appears to have started early in the giraffe's lineage, 
with the vertebrae closer to the skull lengthening first, followed by the lengthening of vertebrae further down later in their lineage's line. A review published in 2009 by Bad Langanen, Adams and Manga in the Zoological Journal of Linnaean Society showed that in the giraffe lineage, significant neck elongation gone around 14 million years ago and was at modern proportions by around 5 million years ago. The fossil record seems to show that the elongation of the giraffe's neck occurred during a global pattern of aridification, in which forests were replaced by grasslands. This change in environment and the resulting limited food could produce a selection effect, which could be part of the reason for the neck elongation. However, again, correlation doesn't equal causation. Another paper by Wang and others published in 2022 in the journal Science showed that a direct ancestor of the giraffe had evolved helmet-like headgear and complex head and neck joints indicative of intense headbutting combat, which they argue this indicates that combat was the primary driving force for giraffes that have evolved long necks, and high-level browsing was just likely to be a second-order benefit of this evolution. However, ultimately, we still do not fully understand why giraffes have such unusual long necks. Through a combination of natural history, genetics, paleobiology and evolutionary theory, we might come to a better understanding. Although this will no doubt take persistent investigation, but I think that if a giraffe can spend such a long time growing such a fantastic long neck, we can spend just a little time trying to find out why. <laughs>